I'm Jeff Cross, and this is The Jeff Cross Show. With me today, we have Ben Lesh from Netflix and Alex Eagle from Google. Hi, this is The Alex Eagle Show. Today, we're here with Jeff Cross from Google and Ben Lesh from Netflix. I don't know either one of these two people. <laughs> well, <laughs> you're about to. Oh, <laughs> fantastic. Actually, yeah. uh, the first thing we do when we meet someone from the Angular team is we brand them with an Angular logo, so if I could... I brought a temporary tattoo. Nice. Maybe not so temporary. We'll see. Um, so I've got my water Mine through the shower this and morning. my clock there. I lost the tattoos. Do we know where the tattoos are? Uh, excuse me. Tattoos? Yeah, there they are. Okay. So I'll go ahead and dampen the cloth there. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply it to the side of your face. My, like my face. Tables. That's even better. I'm going to dampen this cloth with some artisanal water, and then on my face we remove the plastic mm -hmm. seal. Did, did he do this to you earlier? Uh, no, my, mine happened while we were out drinking last night. <laughs> it just fell on it. He passed out and it just stayed. Uh, they were going around the whole table. <laughs> All right, we just need stay to, still. You'll need to be still for Would this. you need me to hold him? Um, you can ask some questions as, as he's oh, yeah. being still waiting for this. Yeah, can, yeah what's your... What you can you hold me as long as it's tender. This will take about 30 seconds. So. Um, ben, what's your deepest fear? Uh, you can't answer it. Angular tattoos. Okay. What's, I, what's your really, really regret? TypeScript tattoos wouldn't be worse. Oh yeah, Ben is the only person who doesn't like TypeScript. I I, think. I like it until um, I don't like it. Yeah. Mostly I like it. Observables are probably the hardest thing to get right with with TypeScript. All right, Has anyone, have you been counting? Uh, one, two, two three, three, four, five. Okay, it's probably good. Yeah, one. yeah, sure. All right, you ready? Now, Brad, Brad you, says the best thing like to do is to slide it face. down. Don't peel it off. Slide it down. Yeah, slide it down so that, so that you're pressing against the tattoo the whole time. This is... No, that's yeah. that's going to drag it. All right, no, you, no, you can true. remove it. Okay. Or you can just leave it like that. That's pretty cool, right? That's... Ah. Wow. Perfect. Okay. What? Looks pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> you're one of us now. Yeah. yeah. Well, actually, mine's on, my, mine's on my arm. Oh, okay. All right, we're back. Yeah, after after having been branded. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how, how are you feeling? Um, it's, it, you don't notice it after a little while. I feel a little bit like property now. And people, when you walk around the conference, they look at you and, and, and you, uh, you're you like, oh, I, I, I must be handsome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I think when people look at me. Yeah. It's all the time. I, uh, I like that you're wearing a Google product shirt. Uh, I am. I am. Uh, I rarely wear shirts that I pay for mm -hmm. because I get so many free ones. You get a sucker to pay for a shirt. I know. After mm -hmm. all these they need to start giving out jeans at conferences. I think. I wish they were. Here. I wish they were firing socks out of the cannon because I think I'm one short for flying home tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, some, I'm gonna have yeah. to. And you have to go through and smell every used pair to figure out what you yeah. want to use. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was gonna say they could. They could hand out swag underpants. Mm -hmm. so you never know. Maybe. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of different styles though. I mean, with yeah. t-shirts, it's kind of, you know, the one style fits all, but... That's true. That's true. Uh, yeah. I, we, we, could, we could talk about, like, what kind of underpants styles we each prefer, or we could talk about let's, something more let's technical. Let's that, because we're... we're, yeah. we're we already know, basically. We're, I mean, we've, we've talked about that a number we're of times. We're at ng-conf, and uh, we know, like, just recently, Angular has gone to release Candidate, correct? That's correct. We're, we're yes. RC, I don't know. RC1. So, RC1 still, okay. Yeah, so we've I'm, stabilized for a few we, days. We let, I'm, we, I'm wondering, real talk, <laughs> how much scrambling was there right before the conference to get that done? Real, real talk? Or? Yeah. Oh. Uh, there was there was a fair amount of scrambling. So, I mean, uh, so Rob Wormald went on stage in the day, day two keynote and took responsibility, which is true. Um, so we had this we had this meeting. We, we knew that the offline compiler was coming up, and we needed to change the packaging a little bit. Um, but we still had everything under the Angular 2 NPM package, a single package, and we split it up into subcomponents that we called barrels. Um, but that was weird. We had to invent a word. So why, yeah, why barrels? <laughs> well, because every other word was already used. Sub package didn't quite fit. Bundles did, wasn't accurate. Modules no good. The English Packages language is just lacking. <laughs> yeah. Well, so the English language has lots of words. So mo like, modules, you're gonna start calling them like pickles then. Like that something was else barrel theme. There's a design doc with pickles mentioned in <laughs> why we decided not to go with Oh man, the design docs were going so fast, I didn't even see Barrels. Them. Yeah, so I mean, and obviously with barrels, then later you would have some other thing you would need to give a name, you would call that monkeys, you would be able to sort of right. carry the, the metaphor. There would have been lots of good tooling ideas, <laughs> tooling names uh, from that. Packages, I don't know. Can we fit more monkeys in this barrel? Oh, we can fit a lot of monkeys in the barrel, yeah. Igor. Uh, so, so what happened was we had this. We were having this meeting, and Rob and, and we had we had some basic basic agreement that we needed uh, a UMD bundle for people who didn't want to do tooling. Just give me ES5, give me a JS file I can smack in a script tag, 
Um, we wanted to have an ES6 distribution so people can do roll up and other you know tree shaking kind of tooling and do their own six to five maybe with Babel, and then we wanted to have a, you know vanilla ES5, um, but but unbundled distributions so you bundle it yourself. Um, and then Rob at the end of the meeting was like, hey, what if we also didn't have barrels and we split things up actually into packages and this would make things better for a few reasons. You wouldn't have one gigantic UMD bundle, you'd have several, you could pick and choose. People might want to use our DI and not use forms. Um, and so I think Igor was, this had come up before and it was resisted and Igor was, was at this moment he was, he was, he was, he was feeling more malleable about it. So, so they, they decided to go for it. It was the last chance before release candidate and now we have a commitment to keeping things the same. So. Everybody, everybody really wanted to, um, to, to have no regrets, right? No, no regrets. Release Canada is, is what we wanted. Uh -huh. We did everything we needed to do before we hit it. Mm -hmm. No regrets. No, no regrets. <laughs> so uh, Igor, I found is, um, I think if you're just persistent with him about a good point, he becomes valuable over time. Mm -hmm. Unless it's Mishko. He resists Mishko just for the sake of it. <laughs> just respect. Yeah, yeah. just respect. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a fantastic photo. I don't know. I don't know if it's if, it, if it's out there in the world. But uh, Mishko had his his newborn, I don't know, maybe three, four week old baby in his arm at the office, arguing with Igor quite heatedly about uh, I forget which what the controversy of the day was. Um, but that, yeah, that's so cute. That was for the life cycle hooks, right? Yeah, whether we were going to use ES6 symbols mm -hmm. or the on on init, mm -hmm. um, you know, yeah. method NG, NG on init is what we settled on. But I mean, having a baby uh, really helps to diffuse the tension in the room. Mm -hmm. And they're like BFFs. Like, yeah. We all argue, but everyone's friends. That's true. <laughs> Except sometimes we argue, and I wouldn't say we're really no, friends. I don't but think we have ever argued, Jeff. Uh, we argue you, about creative direction. Can you tell me one time that we've had an argument about creative um, direction? I wanted to make a funny video for NGConf where we would like, yeah. do some espionage yeah. stuff. Yeah. Uh, and you shot it down and you said, uh, I don't think it would be funny, and there was kind of a rift out Well, that. I mean, we just didn't work out the production. I, so, um, you know, uh, we're, we're going to have a lot more funny videos coming up. There was all this all this repackaging work to do, it kind of... Mm -hmm. Do we need to repair this relationship? Uh, yeah. Probably. Probably, yeah. yeah. Uh, do you have any experience as a as sort of a marital or relationship counselor? I'm afraid not, but I tell you what, why don't you, uh, we'll just switch seats, come on. You can, uh, I guess we'll sit a little closer. Yeah. All right. So... Um, so I felt like you weren't telling me everything that you were thinking. And I felt like you weren't listening to everything I was saying. Well, I felt like you were saying things that you didn't really mean. And I felt like you were meaning things I wasn't really saying. Well, I think I can agree to half of that. Uh, I can agree to the other half. Oh, all right, all right. Yeah. All so right. let's make the video. Yeah, uh, yeah, can we make a video right now? Actually, do you have a, do you have a camera handy? We could make a video right now. No? Okay, I'm being told we don't. Okay. All right. After we get back, once everything is, is still. I, yeah, I think we're going to make a fantastic... Back. I don't like looking back and forth. Okay. Yeah, right. yeah. No, I'll sit over here. No? Yeah, but you just... Yeah. There no. we go. Oh, I can sit in the middle? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. oh yep. this is nice. Isn't that? Yeah. It's good. Ah. <sighs> yeah. So, Ben, let's talk about RxJS. <laughs> okay. If I could take over the host role, yeah, 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 so yeah. Turn the tables you, on you. I, 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 I'm really wondering if it's going to hit uh, release candidate by by RxConf. I, I think I saw beta <laughs> oh, beta seven. Was beta seven pushed this week? Uh, beta seven, I believe, yes, is out. Cool. So. Yeah, I accidentally installed it and I got npm complaining at me. It yeah, that happened to me too. Mm. Um, when's it gonna be release candidate? Uh, it's it's close. There's a set of about eight issues that say. Blocking 5.0 release. And they're all quite blocked on Rob Wormald. Yeah, giving yeah. some input. Yeah. Basically all Rob. That, yeah, so it seems like all problems point back to Rob Wormald. <laughs> would, would you guys say that's accurate? But also all good things point back to him. So. A lot of solutions, yeah. yeah. He, no, he's, he's, uh, he's an active member of our team. Yeah. Yeah. So, it, well, I'm, I'm figuring, what I'm hoping for, what I'm hoping for is that now that Angular is in RC, um, you don't want to have a beta dependency, right? So I'm hoping to, to pull in more help from from Rob. Yeah, I, I, well, I literally was poking Brad Green, like like physically poking, asking him, him to poke mm -hmm. Rob Wormall. Yeah, but give give this to Rob. That's that's what I was doing. Yeah, he's the he's the new observable master. Everyone goes to him for all the observable questions on the team. Like, oh, what's a flat map? 
What's mm-hmm. a switch map? Why is it called switch map? Mm-hmm. And he always just says, well, Ben Lynch thought it was a good idea. <laughs> right. Well, the R in RX actually stands for Rob. I mean, that it, mm-hmm. it, 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 it predates him using it by a lot, but Microsoft, they knew mm-hmm. that uh, Rob Wormholt. They didn't know who it would be, but they knew it would be like a Rob. A Rob. Well, actually, they, I think they originally had a, a Rob whose last name started with X, um, mm. which made more sense at the time. Yeah, yeah. one letter off, huh? Mm-hmm. W- Rob X, right? Very, very close. Rob Zermold? Rob Xylophone. Yeah. Maybe he would be open to changing his name. If anybody who's watching writes children's books, by the way, please, like, there have got to be more words that start with X. I don't want to read any more. Is that X-ray or xylophone? Boring. Mm-hmm. <laughs> X-ray's not even a word. Xenophobia is another one. Is that, that's a lot of children's that's, books. That's, I, think. I think lots of children's books talk about xenophobia. Uh-huh. Um, that's like, I think, Children are natural xenophobes. Well, the, I believe the Trump campaign actually hands those out to yeah, children. Yeah, yeah, I saw those at, at his last rally. <laughs> oh, oh, I, I didn't know this was going to be about politics. Yeah, but is, it, is it okay for us to really go into politics? Right. And, I don't yeah. think that's legal in Utah. Okay, yeah, no more politics. Okay, fair. The, we acknowledge there are presidential candidates. Mm-hmm. And probably one of them will be the president. Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> More than likely. Or, or somewhat presidential in some fashion. At some mm-hmm. point. Yeah, until we have uh, some sort of really good AI that can take that over. <laughs> yeah. We're, We're not that far off. Either. Right. Yeah, I mean, I'll, we should... I'll go. Yeah, AlphaGo was was an amazing success. I think if we had something that could that could be president, if and, you can uh, win Go, you can run a country. Yeah. Well, I, I think if there was at least one of the presidential candidates this year that wanted to build a wall between the United States and computers, so I acknowledge uh, there were stories about that. On the that list. was probably going to keep the AI from ever becoming president. Right. Sorry. Yeah. Until the until they. I think I think actually Boston Dynamics does have things that climb over walls, don't they? <laughs> Just about. Everything uh, that can climb can get over a wall. <laughs> a cat can go over a wall. <laughs> right. Oh, I've seen it on YouTube. Wow. Oh, yeah, YouTube. Did yeah. you see that one? No. With the, uh, there was a cat and he was being real cute. Uh-huh. So, so TypeScript. Now, you guys mentioned that I I don't like TypeScript. That's you complain TypeScript. about TypeScript. I I will say that most of the issues that we get in RxJS are typings related, mm-hmm. um, and that. TypeScript's type system doesn't always, you know, squarely fit RxJS's. But they've been really adaptive to, to have, the needs of the Rx project. They have. They yeah, have. They sent you pull requests to make your, your build faster. It's really, yes, really, really they did. Really nice that, was, that was extremely nice of them. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm, really, I'm really kind of hoping they can reconsider the, like, types, type overrides for methods that have, like, re- a rest first type behavior. There's an issue out there like that. Yeah, now, you felt, can't do that for like the transpilation, obviously, because there's there's like underlying issues with doing that. But just for the the type verification piece, and then the, but that would also have like variadic generics and. Alex has actually discouraged this, and he'll tell you why. Well, it came up yesterday uh, in one of our sessions. Rado was explaining that uh, the TypeScript emit to be performant needs to not be type aware for the most part, unless it needs to know about renaming things. Um, it would be less less performant if they had to retype check everything in order to emit files. I think this is one of the reasons. Yeah. Um, and I think the other reason is that you guys have uh, a penchant for this sort of API vanity. That it's, you want it to look really, really good. You want it to like because you, you could express this the same thing in another way, right? The the, the variadic. You mean you could chain another method? I for or a you couple of array instead or something. But nobody, right. no one wants to write those brackets. Like nobody does. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 it is, it is less elegant. It's true. It's, um, you know, and I like the, I mean, you guys also push the envelope on the, the, the module reopening. So this is where one file can contribute additional symbols that appear inside of another external module, right? right. So this is where, which we did for Angular, really. For, that was when I was driving the, the observable the, the stuff and I was like, we need to have independent operators and the typings need to work and we don't want to declare them on the observable. Right. And then I said, I'm done. Rob Wormald, you take over. <laughs> It, no, it has been amazing how much several of us have, have, have been really uh, engaged with the TypeScript team uh, and gotten stuff in. And they're, they're, so, um, yeah. What we really yeah. wanted was function bind support, uh, the ES7 proposal. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. I think not everyone agreed on how to implement that uh, on the TC39. And so yeah. TypeScript was like, mm, not quite yet. Even though with decorators, I mean, they did that before anyone cared about it, right? Right. <laughs> right. So, yeah, decorators. Slippery slope. So for slope, give me function bind, please. So yeah, we can function bind right expression makes a big difference in our, with RxJS. Like I, I, most of our projects at Netflix use Babel, and I use function bind all the time. Mm. And uh, w- if if that were to exist in TypeScript, then 
the need for that uh, the patch operator, the add mm -hmm. operator map or whatever, like that would just go away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would make a lot of things nicer. You don't, because right now we have this best practice of you import all the auto patching operators in a single place in your application so that it's not surprising when <laughs> something's not been patched because of some side effects. Right, around. yeah. Um, but yeah, we could get rid of that by just importing when you need it. So TypeScript team, if you're listening, you would win Ben over to TypeScript if you just would add function bind support and we could get rid of this uh, crazy yeah. There would actually, there'd probably be a lot of uh, projects at Netflix that would get ported over to See? TypeScript, for, for real. Because there's a lot of people that are fans of typed languages there. Um, but at the same time, there's, there's certain ergonomics around, especially when you're using Rx that aren't great so um, we're trying to the RX the RX folks are trying their best to handle that uh, David Driscoll uh, does an awesome job at you know every time I have a problem things. upgrading to RX it's his commit that I see that <laughs> but he's doing something good but it's like okay now we have to update our TypeScript version and mm -hmm. figure out where to get this mm -hmm. symbol typing is from but right. he's great yeah and, yeah, even, even, though he keeps, even though he keeps driscolling our build. He keeps driscolling uh, my, my days. <laughs> it's, like. it's a, it's a, is that a phrase now in mm -hmm. English? I guess. There you go. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, also another phrase that we developed last night, um, so we have this the new compiler, which you know, but we're going to talk about that, right? Yeah, I just brought it up and, and totally took talk over about, your conversation. We're going to talk about how it's a project. It. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah, so we can just like zoom in on me at this point. <laughs> um, how much uh, time is he guaranteed? Like one minute? talk about this compiler thing. Yeah, so we added a new compiler, it runs offline, we call it static, it's faster, slower, bigger, smaller. It's, it's, it's great, it's a bee's knees. <laughs> to be as, like, nailed this whole thing, I mean, he wrote the compiler that was running in the online mode, so this is the dynamic, the dynamic kind, uh, and then he rewrote tons of stuff in there to make it work at, as a build step. Uh, it's amazing, so I just, I, like, wrapped it with something that looks like TSC to make it uh, easier to drop in, uh, drop in replacement in the build pipeline. Um, and it's cool. Awesome. So is that like something people can go out and see? It's, like, so this, uh, we, we do have a, we have a, a package that's released on NPM. Um, there's some like NG4 and NGIF weren't working as of, you know, the night before the conference and so we were scrambling. Um, the RC2 doesn't have bugs that I know of, so I think as when RC2 comes out that's a good time people can give it a try. Uh, we also haven't really written docs, it has a short readme, um, but we need some docs and I was going to work on a blog post. Um, to, to explain it some more. Right now I think all people have is like what Mishko showed and the demo that is only on Rob's laptop. Right. Yeah. Right. So we just got to keep Rob safe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was laptop. It was laptop. And it's That's password. Not, not necessarily yeah. wrong. Yeah. So the Tobiler, Tobias Bosch. Uh -oh, uh, here we go. Here, him and I, we have a history, right? Mm -hmm. oh. And um, I don't know, you might not know this, he, he knows. So I was, I was actually talking to Pete Bacon Darwin about this yesterday. And what it is, is at one point in time, I had written a very large PR for, a couple large PRs, I think, for Angular 1. SVG support in Angular 1. Oh, that was, this, that was the second one. The first mm -hmm. one was the, all the date-time directives. Mm -hmm. And it, for that one alone, like, I looked at it and realized that I had written something like 13% of Angular 1 at that point. Like, if that was, that was going to be Anything merged. involving date, just for whatever reason, is the most difficult thing to implement. Right, right. For better or worse, that was that was what it was, and um, <laughs> I, worked, I worked pretty hard on it. It was before I worked for Netflix or any of that, and, mm -hmm. uh, and it was merged, but it was merged in such a way that Tobias's name was on it, and not mine. <laughs> so I was never you added had to the, the commit or something. And so then, something. Uh, you know, that that was kind of like, oh well, I got hired at Netflix, and so I was kind of like, well, I work at Netflix now. It's not a big deal, but. I missed out on my GitHub cred, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then that's uh, true. You would have had recruiters all over you after that one. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, um, I think that is why. Because they look why. at commit history. Recruiters. Well, no, they, they they go to your they go to the homepage and they look how green you well, are. And, you know, it is something you can show people. Like if you're in you know, like Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and you say, "Well, I wrote this huge chunk of Angular, and mm -hmm. here's the my name in the contributors list to prove it." Yeah, uh, it, it does mean something. That's what I did for RX. I just added like a couple of scripts, and <laughs> yeah, maybe a yeah. README or something. <laughs> yeah. For a while, I was like one of the top five contributors. Yeah, it's, it's such a big deal to be so, a yeah. contributor. Um, I had the opposite experience in the scramble to get the stuff in for the conference. A couple of Tobias's changes have my name on them. So <laughs> I've had some sort of so, like, right, karmic so, justice. Wait, 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 wait. I'm not, I'm not done. So like, okay, okay right. sorry. So <clears> we, uh, then Igor and I worked on the story, right? We, we, re, we refactored the compiler uh, to handle SVG. And we did that like, I, I paired on it. And I submitted a pull request. 
Tobias merges that under Tobias's name. <laughs> <laughs> and so after that, I was I was giving Tobias a hard time like any time I talked to him, and he, it actually did bother him, so I stopped doing it. But uh, then Jeff agreed. Uh, Tobias, super nice he's guy. He never intentionally guy. do something. Yeah, like he's him. a he's a totally yeah. great guy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and Jeff Jeff agreed to con contractually mention my name in every one of his talks for like the next five years. That was like mm -hmm. a year and a half ago. And I have done it every. It, he does. I think you've you've been at most of the talks I've given in the past a couple years, and every I, even two days ago I mentioned you and said thank you for whatever contribution you think you've made or <laughs> for the for these like whatever you've you that, yeah. done <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah so i've kept my word so, no, even but, though i had nothing to do with the original offense well I, I took it upon myself uh pbd uh pete bacon darwin had had a really great idea which was wait for one of Tobias's huge refactors mm -hmm. and then just check it in under my name. Mm -hmm. like, we, yeah, like swap good. the history out. So I, I don't know what this used to look like. I mean, now in GitHub, it's, you, you see both like the author and the committer like separately show up on the, on the, on the page. So yeah, I don't know what it is. Sometimes, so yeah. like if, if I take somebody's PR and I do the merge, their name is still on it. And also you can take a PR and you take a bunch of commits. And so Tobias and I had a couple of PRs just going back and forth, each of us throwing commits into it. And so actually the PR got merged with a mix of the two of us, but then I would do some squashes, and so yeah, all of his stuff would be like, oh, let me squash it up into mine, and then right, yeah. there. Yeah, I know Tobias's rebasing process, and I can see how it happened, because usually after everything works, he'll then squash everything into a single commit, unstage everything, and then start to stage things one at a time and create new individual commits to make right, it yeah, logical. Yeah. And so that's yeah. probably what, what happened there. <laughs> yeah. Either, I, I never really investigated what happened, just I kind of noticed it was like, eh, oh well, like, but it was, mm -hmm. Fun for me to tease for to be a spot until I realized it actually did bother him because he's a really nice guy. So I, you I, used yeah, to have your own slide like in the my presentations. I would say like things spin last and have your picture. So. <laughs> right. But now I've just gone to just mentioning you. Just so. just mention in passing. Uh -huh. it, it fulfills the contract. So exactly. <laughs> if he doesn't do it uh, according to the contract, I own half of Google. It's so it's very right. it's very important. It's lucrative. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it seems like you have a pretty good incentive to so just depends um, on which half. <laughs> yeah. As um, I thought, I'm pretty sure all the halves are good. Yeah, right. Some halves are good now. Some halves will stay on message, Jeff. Okay. They, okay. they they keep trying to they keep keep trying to just give me Nest to like make it go away. And I'm like, no. <laughs> Is that that's not part of Google? Is, right. Isn't it? No, that's an alphabet company. Oh, see, well, that's see. how they got around the contract. They're like, okay, jokes on you. We're splitting everything. And <laughs> yep. Sorry, your half has been diluted. Oh, I have so many funny ideas of, of Google properties that I would claim that, that you're going to win, but that wouldn't be that wouldn't be a nice thing to say about any of them. Not until after performance review time. Right. Yeah, yeah you gotta, gotta wait for that to be done. Mm -hmm. Speaking of performance reviews, I had a fun moment right before the day two keynote, so I was going on uh, at last, and obviously Brad had to go on first. Sat next to him at breakfast, and they gave us these breakfast tacos because it was Cinco de Mayo. And they were in this packaging. It's a lot like uh, Jeff and I were in the airport on our way here. I was trying to open an SD card, and it's tamper-proof, right? But I don't know why you would put tamper-proof packaging for a breakfast taco, especially because I didn't have any tools with me, and like we're gonna go on stage, so I just like, uh, uh, and I just like, like force it as hard as I can, and then it tears, and my taco flips out and hits Brad in the face, and then runs down his shirt. <laughs> you're, not just, going, you're not going for promotion, are you? So, no. Okay. How much satisfaction did you get out of that, though? Like, was that? I, I, it, it was hilarious. I mean, you know, the table was laughing. So, I, I, you know, and, 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 you know, Brad did not have to go change his shirt. So it was, uh, it was okay. Uh, it could have gone worse. Wish I could have been there. Well, that's why you always have to have your GoPro going just, to capture these. Just moments. like well, just we to, broke that. Just SD keep it card. going. Would you just stand up and yell "food fight"? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. There has to be a moment where everyone's staring at Brad, waiting to see what happens, and yeah, I, he has to yell it. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the the food actually the food of this conference has been really good. There's mm -hmm. been well, there was bacon wrapped bacon wrapped bacon. Yes, which was. I think we only bacon had three heart attacks yesterday as a result of that. So that was that was <laughs> right. good. It's like three, three uh, there's you know two thousand people here. So yeah, that's like less three, than one percent. Three people so. have dropped. You know, yeah. I guess they, they're all safe now. <laughs> no, statistically likely. I mean, you know, how many people do you expect to die at a large conference like this? It's probably, you know, somewhere between zero and, uh, you know, one digit number. It's, and there's, there's, you got to figure in the amount of bacon at the conference too, I think. Mm -hmm. really, yeah, yeah, there's a direct relationship. <laughs> direct correlation. So, R Rx, I know that he's been trying to use Rx, using Rx. I've been using Rx. Yeah, I've been successful in making it map things and subscribe to things mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. 
I, I probably break some of the rules of, of Rx sometimes. I've stopped extending things. I've stopped extending subjects because yeah. it always turns out to be a bad idea. Um, but yeah, I, I use Rx quite a bit. I, I don't. No. Well, I mean, I you know, I, I I have to do the build tooling, so I don't really write apps most of the time. So uh, are great for build tooling. I I do make Rx compile under all kinds of weird conditions and different <laughs> versions of TypeScript, and like you swap that's, out some standard libraries, and that's good. You know, good. and we had we had some type some minor typings issues because um, I, you know, I, that stuff is still shaking out. I use Rx uh, when I use it, I'm fine. When I'm working on it, I I think ninety percent of the time it just breaks stuff, and then I get it working, and then I I, I commit that. Right. So break and then fix. Yep. 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 So Ben, would you how long are your chains of operators on observables? Uh on average if I'm depends on what I'm doing. So let's just say that I was gonna do something really complicated like uh like the multiplex WebSocket thing. You're probably looking at maybe seven operators or so and something like that. Mm -hmm. um, most of the time I think it's usually like three or four. Um, Would you, so are you pretty subscription conservative in, uh, I'm sorry, I'm, just, I'm changing totally to technical things yeah, here, but this is something I always go up, with, go up against is like, should I do multiple things in a map or something like do filtering and mapping in the same thing and say like, rather than create a filter and then a map and then another filter after that? Um, you know, I would, I tend to do the filter and then the map. Um, RxJS5 right now isn't particularly optimized for that, but there's, there's plans uh, coming down the pipe to kind of flatten those things when they're actually executed. Oh. So um, having them all in one step wouldn't really so buy you anything, we'll, but um, maybe some disorganization. We'll create an offline compiler for Rx too. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I mean, you you want to have a, a DSL for this thing anyway, right. so we'll just uh, it just converts it into imperative code. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, yeah, it's it's sort of isomorphic with uh, you know like a, 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 a CLR .NET runtime bytecode, and we'll just uh, then we can reverse transmogrify that back into JavaScript, and then you're set. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah, we we like to build build tooling. Mm -hmm. It's fun. I'm excited about that. Sounds great. But yeah, the the if am I subscription adverse? Um, I try to limit if if I find like a particular like I'm working on a component or something, and I find that I'm managing like more than two subscriptions to things, um, I feel like either maybe I'm doing too much with observables or more than likely, whatever actions or whatever I'm composing up above probably weren't composed well, and I'm I'm doing mm -hmm. something with like too hot observables or something. It's you should not. see some of the crazy things I've done. <laughs> But an Angular manages subscriptions for you if you use the async pipe. Yeah. That's, yeah. I always try to make sure I just create the observables and then in my template let it create the subscription and, and dispose of it so I don't have to worry about it. Yeah, any any sort of um, like platformy stuff that I write that handles observables, I usually, well, for one, I try to make it handle promises as well because some people are just more comfortable with that. But I usually try to make it so they don't have to manage a subscription like ever. Like mm -hmm. you give some function an observable and let that deal with mm -hmm. um, when to subscribe or unsubscribe. And actually, a lot of the time, managing unsubscription really what you wanted to do was do like a take until. Mm -hmm. uh, so you would trigger some other event that caused your observable to stop emitting values instead of. Um, you know, very explicitly and imperatively, like calling unsubscribe on a on a subject, mm -hmm. uh, you could just compose that in. So that's when I say, like, if see more than one or more than two subscriptions or so mm -hmm. in a component, I think, yeah, I'm, I might not be doing this right. Like, I probably should be firing some event that you know goes up into an observable and does it take until on mm -hmm. whatever streams I'm trying to manage. So. Having done a lot of work in Java, we where we 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 pass streams around. We started using annotations. To indicate that, like this method, this method's contract includes that it will close the stream that it's handed. Um, have you ever, and you were just mentioning if you pass an observable around, it's not clear whose job it is to unsubscribe and clean up. Um, any thought about uh, how you can use static analysis to describe the contract of of, uh, of 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 what should be done with this observable? I've honestly never thought about it. Um, Did you have to? I mean, are there bugs where where subscriptions leak because? 
Uh, yeah, um, I mean, you intended for it to be closed by the method you handed to. Uh, yeah, the, there's definitely like one of the one of the things that people can do is it's the same as registering like an event listener on a DOM element and then just forgetting to unregister it. Mm -hmm. um, would be I'm going to set up some observable interval and have it doing something and then never unsubscribe and you mm -hmm. go to another view and it's still ticking along in the background like right. trying to update stuff that isn't even there. Right. Um, so yeah, that's definitely a problem that can happen, but I've never considered an approach like that. Yeah, and you also have uh, in Java, and I forget if other languages have this, but sort of a try with resources block. So the finally will automatic. So you you know in the try you initialize some something that needs to be closed or finalized, and then in the finally it always does. Um, yeah, I haven't thought about that much either, but just you, when you mentioned it, it sounds like an interesting thing to look at. You could uh, get that standardized in the JavaScript language. Yeah, I'll talk to Joffre about mm -hmm. that. Jaffa Hussein, who's probably not watching this, but if he is, um, here we go. Yeah. More standards. You, I mean, use some of that free time of yours I don't, to add another standard to the spec. I, I mean, I, I would think as as a, as a start, you would just you put a decorator on the method that says what the contract is, and then you can do some static analysis to enforce it. Put a yeah. decorator on it. That's the solution. Yeah, knows. yeah. We put a decorator on mm -hmm. it. It's Portlandia reference. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, and the other thing I was curious about is. Um, is is uh, you know reactive programming is, is hot fashionable right now? Mm -hmm. Have you seen misuses of RX? And I'm oh, wondering. Yeah. I mean, I've seen like I've seen a refactoring pipeline expressed in terms of an uh, unobservable, which which might be the correct thing to do, but it doesn't like it's not clear whether whether someone proposes this because they've they've mapped out the possibilities and this is the right fit or it's just the the fashion. So I've seen RX mis misused a variety of ways, and some people don't consider this a misuse, but like. If you're doing like, oh, I've got this array and all I want to do is map and filter it and it's a very, very small array, mm -hmm. don't use RX for that. Just use map and filter. It's probably faster. Mm -hmm. um, if you've got some huge array or something and you want to use RX to do that because you're trying to reduce those intermediary, intermediary arrays from being allocated and garbage collected, then that's probably an okay use. But yeah. uh, I see that. Uh, the, the one thing I see most often is people um, pumping things through subjects everywhere. Like, they'll have an observable and then they'll subscribe to it and in the subscription they'll pump values to some other subject they've got somewhere else. And that's kind of, it's kind of, an it's usually unnecessary. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a little bit of an anti-pattern. Like a subject is really, uh, you know, maybe if you have like in uh, React, for example, they, it's unicast, like all of your click events or whatever. You can only provide one function to be handled by a click, right? And there, you might want to take that and then pump a value into a subject or something because it's that that's like a valid use case for a subject where, like, people get to where they're using it for everything. And then the the weirdest one that I see really a lot, and this is I see this done with promises sometimes too, are people leaking out the notifiers with. Um, so like they'll take the observer, they'll they'll create a, they'll create uh, an observable, they'll take the observer. And then they'll like leak it outside of the observable closure by assigning it to some outer scope, so they can then notify things like mm. that way, or they'll or they'll even use subjects for that too. And you know you don't really you don't really want to to leak out the thing that can make your stream notify that you try to keep that contained in the stream. But yeah, those are those are the big ones. Okay. I well, I guess maybe we should write RX lint. <laughs> so I was gonna say, Maybe. add a tool to it. Yeah, hey, well, we have a tool for that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Does it involve decorators? Mm, I could. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I think it should. Be, it should definitely involve decorators. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Actually, we have a one of our proposals um, for for handling uh, uh, for in the Angular framework uh, for understanding which decorators we should act on in in the offline compiler would be to have meta decorators. So you just decorate the decorator. <coughs> and yeah, of course, it's it's funny, but also yeah. maybe the right thing. To but do. also brilliant. Yeah, of, of course. <laughs> hey, we have an abstraction. Let's use it more. How do you know what meta decorator is stacked? <laughs> well, you would have known meta. The meta decorator would have, uh, you know, would have okay. have some 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 data inside that says, I, you know, the thing that I decorate is a, you know, should be retained at runtime or should be only design time decorator or it should, you know, it acts like an Angular component even though it might not be the at component decorator, right? Uh, yeah, or something silly. I mean, you could put silly things in there too. See a very decorator heavy world ahead of us. Yeah, so actually there's, there's an interesting bit about decorators that just came up as we were working on the offline compiler and we were running these tree shakers and they weren't tree shaking anything out. And so we, we, we did like, a, we, we found this utility that lets you get a tree map of the size of your binary and where all the libraries that it came from. We're like, we have every Rx operator still in here. <laughs> we have HTTP, forms, the, we have the Angular compiler. We don't use any of that in our application. It turns out 
Um, decorators have two global side effects. So one is if you use the reflect metadata, it adds it to this global uh, map so that you can later get back the metadata that was lost in the JS emit, um, which you could turn off. But the other is that the decorator itself is a function that can have arbitrary side effects, and it can have side effects on the, on the, the thing that it decorates. Um, so you can't, you can't remove any of them uh, statically, right? You, you, you have to wait until you see the run, observe the runtime behavior before you know whether it's safe to remove this or not. Okay. Um, so it turns out for tree shaking, we actually need annotations, which was the, the other proposal. Uh, and in, in AtScript, uh, way back in the day, we had annotations, right? So I think we might just go back to AtScript is, is the plan. <laughs> so so is, this, is this something that the Angular team's going to be, uh, I'm assuming, talking to the TC39 about? Yeah, so Mishko's already started the conversation, and we need to follow up on that. Um, but it turns out... Um, so there, there are two problems. One is simply um, making the tree shaker work by lowering the syntax, and that we just did ourselves. So in this compiler tool that we that we that we announced at the keynote, um, we we before we hand the code to TypeScript, we just walk through. We find the decorators, we lower them into into static in, uh, you know objects that are attached to the the class itself, um, and then a tree shakes fine. So we basically just take the syntax and just use it to create annotations instead. But the second problem is that that means if you did have any dynamic behavior in your decorator, it just it just doesn't happen anymore. So right. you might take your application and convert it to be static, be statically analyzed, and then it doesn't work. So it so if I write my own custom decorator, though, you guys are not going to do that to my custom. You're just looking for specific if you, if you, decorators. Uh, no, I mean uh, the decorators. Uh, right right now, we lower all of them um, to annotations. I thought we had a whitelist of decorators. Uh, no, because I mean, you need to be able to make your own decorator that uh, that extends from one of the from one of Angular's decorators. I mean, we don't want mm. we don't want to have anything that's own, first party only, right? You should be able so to now. Write your own. Now we're getting into the meta decorators. Like you can yeah, those to maybe to, that's to, uh, that's on the table. Um, <laughs> decorator actually annotation. I mean, custom meta. custom decorators are fine, but custom decorators with uh, with runtime side effects. Um, you know, either you have to tell us, hey, like this one, I want to keep it this way, keep it as a decorator, do the reflect metadata thing. I know it won't tree shake. That's fine. This will always be in the application, regardless of whether I use it or not. Um, or, or we have to give you an error and say you can't do offline compilation because some of your decorators are not not statically analyzable. Um, so I don't know. That's it's only it only came up in the last few weeks. So that's that's like the hot issue of the day for that. That is for the spec. We should have let in with that. Um, and who knows when nobody's when still this watching. Will publish. <laughs> Maybe this will go online three months from now. And everything will be completely different. Right. Yeah, yeah. That, no, that'll be nice because we'll watch it and we'll say, "Oh, we looked, we looked so happy." So <laughs> that is. Uh, we, had, we had angler stickers on our faces. Yeah, this was. Uh, that's like the the most interesting and disturbing thing I've learned today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm. I everything don't know will if be I'm fine. better for it. Everything <laughs> will be fine. So no, that's open a uh, GitHub issue, and uh, and we'll respond to it. There's probably a GitHub issue about this somewhere. Maybe not. I shouldn't make that. No, I don't. I don't think there is. Um, that may. I mean, I, I assume like if people start using the static, the static uh, compiler, and 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 maybe I, I I suspect there are a lot of people who have written metaprogramming style decorators, and they'll run into this. Um, so I don't know. Alex is to blame for it. Well, you know, you guys both know uh, Jay Phelps. Mm -hmm. And he wrote Core Decorators, which actually is pretty popular. It's uh, it's a set of very common decorators, decorators so you can do things like um, throttle a function <coughs> or auto bind a function, uh, which is more useful in React because you tend to have to like bind. Like where you guys are doing something nice with your components, where if you have a method and a component, you can call it and it'll retain the this context and all of that because of, of what you're doing. Like in React, you're literally just passing a function reference to the next component, mm -hmm. so you have to bind it to mm -hmm. whatever its source was. So there's this auto bind decorator that can take care of that for you, too, mm -hmm. so your code doesn't get all ugly. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there's a he's got a nice set of components, mm -hmm. and um, I don't I don't know if he knows that. But I, I this is the first I've heard where yeah I, I you think know, uh, tree you know, shaking it, it hurts tree shaking to have decorators. Yeah, and I think you can, you know, another workaround would be to, to teach the tree shaker that it's okay to remove the RX operators I don't use, even though they have what appears to you to be a global side effect, like, oh, I'm going to mark it in some way that says, don't worry, guy, no, it's not a problem. This, yeah, this, this thing is a function. It does whatever it wants, but all it actually does is add some static data, so it's fine. Mm -hmm. And then the tree shaker would remove it. 
Um, but, you know, I mean, it's hard for us to explain to users the right way to configure Rollup or Clojure Compiler or whatever other tree shakers come out. It just, you know, makes the, makes the, the configuration space bigger for all of them. Hmm. Um, I, I like the meta decorator idea. I like the idea of, like, decorators by default, we would, they would keep their behavior that's currently in stage zero uh, in TC39. And then if the meta decorator says this is a design time decorator or it's, a, you know, statically, this, this is a static, static decorator, uh, and Pete, Pete Bacon Darwin suggested he thought he thought he saw something in the spec actually, which we need to go track down. Um, that might be this this kind of cold decorator. I know hot and cold a, is your a, word. A decorator named with a symbol. Uh, yes, I guess I guess something that's something really weird. <laughs> um, so it would be like at, and then it would be a, a symbol, right? right? Yeah. Okay. So you would know which one it is. Um, sure. Yeah, we could put that on the table. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's exciting. Always changing. Always changing. Yeah. Oh wait. So who's the host now? We've... Oh, uh, let's switch back. I think you should probably wrap it up. Oh, I mean, yeah. this was your chair. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Great. Yeah. All right. So um, thanks everybody for listening to our Modern Web podcast. Uh, this again is Jeff Cross. This is Alex Eagle, and I'm Ben Lesh. And mm -hmm. it's good talk. Follow guys. us on um, on the internet. On the internet. Mm -hmm. And the Twitters. Yeah. Um, I, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I'm, I'm on the internets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I have, um, I can, I can actually show you on my phone after the podcast. I'll show you like, uh, I have the internet, internet page. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. Can, you, can you guys hug? All right. We've been requested by our producer. We, we need to stay low, right? I mean, yeah. like this. Just stay in frame. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And scene. Yeah. Very nice. Great! I love that Shai has agreed to get into bed. Okay, Shai, you ready? Where do you want it? He'll agree to anything. Do you want the A right side? You could have told him to sit in his underwear mind framework. No, not the bottom. Okay, okay. okay. ready? Ready, three. Yeah. Okay, on my forehead? Yeah. Okay. Okay, now we have to count to 30. Take a picture 30. Do you want, do you want the towel version too? Um, I'm gonna actually do, uh, I have the crystal ball and I want to set up a table with ask me anything and this sticker. Ah, yes. Right? Do, you, do you have some sort of a, a, a hat that looks... Turban? Yeah. Oh, I don't want to be, um, you know, insensitive to cultures. Because you're from Google and you need to, yeah. Yeah, I have to stay within the law. Yeah, so... Um, anything I say can be used against Google in the court of law. Can you bless me? Uh, Gesundheit. Thank you. I, uh, <laughs> I needed that. <laughs> uh, I, 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 so, um, do you want to start counting now? One. Uh, We're probably ten, good, right? Ten. Okay. Ten, ten, okay. Ten, let's see. Fifteen. Whoa. Yeah, this is what Fried Green says to do. Ah. That looks good.